Coming to you from Byron, Mississippi, it's Lakeshore Church. And now we join Pastor Jay Frazier for today's message. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, we find these words. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt should lose its taste, how can it be made salty? It's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand, and it gives light for all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Let's pray together. We thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, today that uh, we understand that you've called us to be servants. You've called us to the branch of service for every one of us in Christ. And again, we thank you, Lord, as we recognize those who were willing to serve. Lord, I pray that our words be yours and our thoughts be yours. And most of all, we sense your presence and walk in obedience to what we hear. And God, we'll be careful to give you the praise and glory for we ask it and pray it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. You may be seated. Thank you. As you're settling in, in my lifetime, I've been intrigued by branches of service. Uh, You might not know this. Uh, I've started working on my November, no shave ember, uh, working on my beard. You wouldn't know by facial hair and all that, that I actually went to a military high school. Uh, From the eighth grade through the 12th grade, I wore a a uniform Monday through Friday. I had all this kind of stuff on it, and I had to shine brass, and I had to have shine shoes and and all that uh, for years of my life. And I'm not saying this always, this kind of is just... Facts. I only had one pair of blue jeans. Uh, I don't really get wigged out. I don't have many pairs of blue jeans now because I wore a, a uniform literally to school every day. I didn't wear blue jeans and all of that. So I have a, I have a special place in my heart for the service. Uh, the branches of service have always fascinated me. And I thought I would start today and I just want to share with you just some history, okay? Uh, not to bore you because it's all relevant. I don't know if you know this. Do you, do you know the oldest branch of, of service? It's actually the National Guard. It, w- it began in the Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1636. Um, of course, over time it became the, our National Guard, but Army National Guard actually started that far back. And then the Congress of the Confederation created in the, the current United States Army on June the 3rd, 1784. <laughs> A few years later, the Coast Guard was started in 1790, and someone said, I didn't think they were that old. It's sort of unique. They were really started as a revenue cutter service, revenue, uh, because of something going on out in the water. They needed uh, somebody to take care and police that world, and that's how it came about. And they were a part of the Department of the Treasury. That's how they were developed. It officially became an armed service in 1917, so a long time ago, but not as far back as the others. The United States Congress created, too, the U.S. Navy in, on March the 27th, 1794. And then four years later, on July the 11th, they created the Marine Corps. 1907, the Air Force was started. And I like this, and just, you know, it'll be recorded. You can go back and listen to it. But in 1907, the Air Force was started. But it wasn't the Air Force. It was actually, in the beginning with, it was part of the Army. Now, just, I played this game with my mind. I went, wait a second, I wonder when the first flight was, the Air Force. You know, that's about flying, so there's got to be something to this. And ironically enough, the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk made four flights in night, and one day, 1903. So you got to see in, in the whole political part of it, you can just see how the government works. That okay, now, now we're getting off the ground, we're flying, we got to have a military to go with it. 1907. But listen, this is pretty unique. By 1947, it became its own separate branch, no longer a part of the Army. I also read this. I thought it was neat because we have some guys here and uh, people that are involved in the uh, individuals that are part of the Air Force. And uh, this is make them, you know, bow up and their heads swell. But uh, it's actually uh, the hardest one to get into, the Air Force is. Uh, of course, you think about flying and aerodynamics and all that. That's what happens. Did you know that at present we have over 17 million veterans in the United States, 17 million. If you go look at the population, you'll find out that's right at 5% of our population are veterans. It's amazing. And so today I want to say on a couple of times, but I want to say today a hearty thank you as the pastor of Lakeshore Church, but also as a citizen of the United States to all the veterans here for what you were willing to do. 
I remember in my lifetime, just thinking about it, you know, the National Guard, I can remember guys saying this, please don't be offended, but I remember guys saying this, that I knew people that were actually got involved in the National Guard so they wouldn't be enlisted, they wouldn't have to go drafts and other things. Some of you nodding your head, you know what I'm talking about, it's in history. But what I found out is that all changed back in the 90s, didn't it? Because we had the National Guard going all over the world. And so they were put in harm's way too. So it really elevates us to be aware. So I say a thank you today. And that's not just for you here, but all the ones that are watching on any kind of listening on any of our digital platforms, I want you to know that as well. We say a thank you. And like no other time in my life, and it seems like it's getting more and more, do I appreciate the sacrifice others did and are willing to do. I also say in our church that we've lost some people the last year that moved from Veterans Day to Memorial Day. And uh, I had the privilege uh, of standing and saying some of the last words over these individuals. So I know the sacrifice people were willing to make for you and me to enjoy the freedoms. And I think we're so free, listen to me, I think we're so free as a nation that we really don't understand the freedoms that we have. <laughs> and somebody said to, to, to understand the freedoms that you have, you have to lose them every now and then to really in, understand how free you are. And uh, we truly are blessed today. I, I love this. I found this and I want to share it with you today. Is that uh, I think it says it, it says it all. We don't know them all, but we owe them all. Amen. Uh, we do. We we don't know them, but we owe them. Uh, today, with just I want to make a parallel in this area of service. I guess that's my fascination, but also my allegiance and parallel that I want to make today is that God. It's amazing that everything that God stands for, it, it, it's displayed in our life by how we serve other people. Just let that sink in. I think we honor veterans today because they were willing to serve. Let me make one other observation as we move on. I don't know if you've thought about this ever. We often remind people this. We call this a worship what? Service. See, there's something wrong that I think we've forgotten that it's about going out. It's about living it for other people to see it. It's about us being a part of the body and doing what God's gifted us to do instead of feed me, feed me, feed me. Now, that's easy and it can be offensive because you're saying, well, you're the one feeding us, so you must have an ego problem. No, Here, here's my point, and I want you to get this today. Many times what we do when it comes to worship is we, we lift our hands up like this. And if we don't lift up our hands, we're actually doing it in our thoughts and our heart. We got our hands up and we make a funnel. And you know what a funnel does? It attracts things. It's like a rain gauge. A lot of times our worship is based on how well, God, what are you going to do for me? I bring my list. God, I got all these needs. I got all these things pressing. And Lord, we got a lot of them this, these days, don't we? God, I need you to show up. I need you to show out. And it's all give me, give me, give me. But I want you to do something for me, okay? In the coming days in your own spiritual disciplines, get alone with God and don't do the funnel deal. But here's, watch this now. Turn your hands out and just worship him. Just praise him. Don't give him all the petitions. Yeah, he doesn't need your Walmart list. He doesn't need your Kroger list every day. He's a good God and he wants to give us good things. And how much more? If we be an evil, give good gifts to our kids. Will God, our Heavenly Father, give us good gifts? But listen to me, sometimes I think we ought to turn our hands instead of a funnel. We all just say, oh, Lord, God, I'm just thankful for what we have. Our branch is service. It's a play on words, but we need to understand that's God. The, the branch that I am in, in God's army is the army of service. Not one particular, but we're all in this. What does the word say about this service? Mark chapter 10, verse 45 says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. Even the Son of Man... If anybody should have ever been served, <laughs> it's him. But he didn't come to serve. He came to, to, to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 says, Just as each one has received a gift, use it to serve others as good stewards of the varied grace of God. I want to remind you. Someone will say, well, why, why was I redeemed? Why was I left here? It's to serve other people. Well, wouldn't that be a great thing? See, see I, I want to remind you something. We, we got some at the thing. If you're visiting today, you can have one. It doesn't cost you anything. It'll change your life. But, but this thing, you know, we've had it for a couple of years. We're not going to change the motto for 21. You know, it's still God's called us to pay it forward. The reason you and I exist is to minister to someone today. Did you know that? To help somebody, to be kind, to smile, and be able to give the reason for the hope that lies within you. If it comes down to greenbacks and resources that we have, God gave you so that we could minister to someone else. Tell you a quick story that happened. Uh, Suzanne and I do a lot of dating through drive throughs I just want y'all to know that. Uh, it, it's a great date life. I mean, it's a, it's a great date day when we go through a drive through We went uh, just last week, last weekend, we went through a drive through to get breakfast. And as I've talked about a lot of that, uh, we looked in behind me and there's a lady in a car by herself and 
And uh, I heard what she was ordering, and I thought, man, I don't even like that kind of stuff. So we pull on around. I got my window open, and uh, we get to the thing. We pay for hours. And then I said, ma'am, I want to pay for the ladies behind me. She said, okay. Mine and Suzanne's was $6 and something. We had a biscuit and something to drink. And uh, the ladies behind us was $26. <laughs> and she was by herself. <laughs> she going to blow up with all that fraud pay she was doing. She said, uh, it's $26. And I said, well, we're going to pay it. So we paid it. Didn't think anything about it. Done it dozens of times. I have my reward because I'm telling y'all. But that's just part of the story. After church last Sunday, Suzanne said, I want to tell you what happened. Somebody in our church comes late, 30 service, came up to Suzanne and said, did y'all buy somebody's breakfast through the drive-thru? She said, yeah, we did. So I, we just want you to know that we were behind that lady and she paid for hours. The point I want to make is this. And you say, well, somebody said, you know, if you, if you blow your own horn, your, your battery will run down, okay? I'm telling you that as an example that God will give it back to you folks. Listen to me. We got to realize to whom much is given, much is required. Let me, I will go so far to say this, right off of what Daniel said. I think we're in the mess we're in in our country, not because of politics and government and all the other issues. We're in the mess we're in because the church has not led the way to show people how to serve and to minister and love like Jesus loves. I believe everything about me. That's not hurting you. That's me too. But listen to me. Proverbs nineteen seventeen. my favorite verse today says, Kindness to the poor is a loan to the Lord, and he will give a reward to the lender. Look at that. Kindness to the poor is a loan to the Lord. A loan. And he will give a reward to the lender. Huh? See, you got to understand that if you want to get God's attention, then you start putting your attention on other folks. The more you put your attention on other folks and start to serve other people, the more God Almighty will put his attention on you. See, today I think, remember the funnel? Today it's about what are you going to do for me? God's waiting for us to do it for others, and then God will start doing it for us. Tomorrow, Galatians 5.13 says, For you were called to be free, brothers and sisters. Only don't use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but serve one another through love. Isn't that a great verse? One more, Hebrews 6.10, For God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you demonstrated for his name by serving the saints and by continuing to serve them. Good stuff. Branches of service today. Four, four thoughts. Uh, we are branches of service. We are. Here, here, here's what we need to know. Jesus is the vine. It's right out of God's word. John 15, 5, Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. It's plain. You ought to go read that whole chapter. There's some, there's some nuggets in there for you to live by. It's plain. Go read it. But let me tell you something. It's plain, but it's also very penetrating. And here's what it is. I remember in church work, I remember early in ministry, maybe even my teenage years, and, and on in maybe 20s and 30s, I remember that this went around, that you shouldn't be fruit inspectors. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be judging people. John 15 judges us, judges us harsh, harshly. It says, if you're going to be mine, you're going to produce fruit. And if you go look in John 15, it's, it, it says some pretty profound things, some, some sure enough harsh things. It says this, if the, if the branch doesn't produce fruit... You prune it for a little while, and if it doesn't come around, you cut it off and throw it in the fire. That's what it says. God expects us to produce fruit. Oh, we love fruit. Man, I do. Uh, the older I get, the more I like it, the more it likes me. But I want to remind you that fruit is on the end of the branch, but it's tied to the vine. You cannot have fruit if you're not tied to the vine. The source of the fruit. Pruning is painful, but it's necessary for production. <laughs> Hebrews 12, verse 6, it says, The ones who the Lord loves, he disciplines. Wow. He disciplines the one he loves. If you go on and read out, I think it's about verse number 11, you'll find out some amazing things. Once God prunes us and we begin to, he does that so that we will be, begin to produce a righteous harvest for him. In other words, we'll have fruit there for people. So the, Jesus is the vine. Listen to this. Secondly, the victory is only in Jesus. I got to say this in this day of unrest. And this day that so many people think all religious roads lead to the same place, they just change the jargon, they just change the verbiage. But yet everybody's, all religions are really saying the same thing. There's always a God, there's always a supreme being, and, and we might have different names for him, but we're all getting there the same way. And we might be on different paths, but we all end in heaven. Listen to me very, very carefully, okay? I will not compromise this even if I'm drug off this platform before my life ends. John 14, 6 says there's only one way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man 
No man. No matter how good, no matter how educated, intellectual, what kind of position he has, no man is going to make it to the Father but through me. That's the great news. And see, when we look in this day and age at all religious roads, and if you're religious and you just have different jargon and terminology, that is not what John 14, 6 says. And today we need to know that victory is only in Jesus. You know, I think this, people can have different religions, but to get to heaven, you have to go through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You need to understand it. I'm not going to back up from it. Listen, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse 21 says, He that knew no sin became sin for us, that you and I might become the righteousness of God. God's desire for us is the victory in Him for us to live it out and bring glory and honor to the Lord. Hmm. And we might become the righteousness. Two more. I think about branches of service. The third thing is God's view. Uh, the, the view from God's perspective. God said, Jesus said that you and I would do greater works. How in the world are we going to do greater works than what Jesus did? How am I going to do a greater work than redeeming mankind? The only answer I got for you is exponentially. Is that greater works means that if the people in this room and the people listening on Facebook Live and the people that are out in the parking lot and every other church and every other person that believes in Christ would go out and serve humanity and represent Christ, then we will do greater works because of multiplication. It's the only answer I got for you. And when I think along the lines, we need to understand God's view. God's called us to invest in each other. I love this in the military term. It's called branches of service. I want to play off that word just for a second. Listen to me. All of us are branches off of the vine. Huh? Your, my, your branch might be different. God might have a different calling. He's got a different desire and a place for your branch to go. But we're still branches in the same vine. What we've done in religion is we've sacrificed the vine. We've changed the vine. The vine can't be changed. The vine is only in Jesus Christ. And they understand that. from The view from God is we're all invested in this thing. We're all grafted into the same vine, but we're all different too. We're in this body, but we're different parts of the body. You with me? We have different callings and gifts and abilities and talents, but we're all in the vine. See, that's where we mess up. We think we can be good enough to be okay with God, but that's not what it's about. What it's about is being in the vine. <laughs> and then the branches, forgive me, branch out from the vine. One more. We need to have this vision of the redeemed, the greatest. See, in our world, we're all mixed up on this one. Out just beyond behind you, on my left, back behind you, Matthew 16, 24 on our cross wall. It's 108. If you haven't done a cross, even if you're visiting today, we would love to see. You know, if you have a cross, we'd love to put it up there. I think we're getting close to 200 crosses now on both of the walls. But on, my, on, the, on one of the walls is our signature verse of the cross wall. It says, if anyone will come after me, meaning salvation, let him deny himself, we could say that's separation, and pick up his cross and follow me. That's the view of God's perspective, that every one of us, uniquely as we are, we all have a cross to bear. We all have giftedness and callings and abilities and talents that God wants us to use for him in serving humanity. Now watch this. How many of you know, how many of you have ever heard the name or know who Arthur Blessed is? You ever heard that name? Raise your hand if you have. We had two people in the 830 service. Anybody know? You're scared, aren't you? You think I'm going to bring you up here if you say you do. I'm not going to bring you up. I saw nobody's hands. Okay, I got one. Okay, two at 830, one at 11. I want to show you who Arthur Blessed is. Arthur Blessed says in 1968, 69, God laid it on his heart about carrying cross across the world. He started early on by going across the United States. At last, in the last part of October... Arthur Blessed turned 80 years of age. He has literally carried a cross across every nation on the globe, on the earth. At present, I found the latest figure he's done is over 43,000 miles he's carried across. Arthur Blessed. What a great picture of what you and I are supposed to do in carrying our cross. Won tens of thousands of people to the Lord. As people have inquired, he tells them why he's doing it, because Jesus carried his cross for him, and from there evangelism takes place. It's an amazing story. Look what I didn't know. Arthur Blessed was born and raised in Greenville, Mississippi. I didn't know that. I've kept up with him through TV and other things since the 80s, I guess, when I first heard of this crazy man carrying a cross all over the world. Did you also know, Mallory? Graduated from Mississippi College. You believe that? His mom and dad are paid like my, your mom and dad are paid. 
Mississippi College boy. I want to remind you today, our view, the reason I chose this, he was in Egypt, of course, if you didn't know that. I want you to just get this visual. Listen, when you leave here today, when you talk about branch of service and branch in service, this is what God expects of me and you. He expects us to carry our cross for Christ. Not around the world necessarily, but every day of our life. Let me, let me, let me end this way. Got one more thought along these lines. Let's go with Veterans Day. When I think of veterans, I've already said it two or three times. All the things I've shared today, veterans showcase, showcase it well. <laughs> they, they really do. When you think about it, Here, here's some of the thoughts. When you see somebody in the service, there's a difference, right? Uh, they carry themselves different. They walk different. They've, they, they've learned how to march. They've learned how to carry, put their shoulders back. They got it all figured out. They look different. I was walking, coming through some airports yesterday, and I saw a guy. He had a big one of those big old duffel bags like they get from basic. And uh, it was as big as he was. He was lugging around the airport. I mean, he almost had some follicles showing on his head. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, he was skint back. You could tell. And he got a little stuff carpet on the top, but on the sides, you could tell he was coming from basic. And I thought there's just a different look. There's a uniform. The way they carry themselves is different. But you know what it reminds me of when I think about veterans? It reminds me of what God has called every one of us to do in the army of the Lord. And I'll show you something. In Ephesians 6, and it's a big, long thing, so you're not going to be up here. But in Ephesians 6, it talks about putting on the whole armor of God. I don't think that's coincidental that God looks at us as a soldier. That God looks at us as being a part of the army of the Lord. Hmm? But I'll show you something today. When I think about in, in 2 Timothy chapter number 2, watch this, in verse number 3 and 4. Look at what it says. Share in the suffering as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Share in the sufferings. We need, we need a reminder as the body of Christ sometimes that it's not always going to be glory. Amen? Sometimes to get to the glory, you got to go through the glory. Are you with me? Sometimes they're going to be shooting at you. Sometimes there's going to be issues. Sometimes you're going to be the only one standing when everybody else is taking shots at you. But that's a good soldier. Watch this now. No one serving, a so, serving as a soldier gets entangled in the concerns of civilian life. Don't we need a reminder of that today with all this going on? Full, we want to fuss and throw up, get all in the middle of everything going on. And I want to remind you that you and I and Jesus Christ are not of this world. We're in it, but we're not of it. We need to be reminded that I'm redeemed. I went from being a foreigner and stranger, now I'm a fellow citizen with the saints of God. And today I'm assured for heaven as if I was already there. Isn't that good news? Don't get all wound up. We can get upset about it. Am I upset? I sure am. You know, Scripture says, be angry and sin not. But listen to me very carefully. You and I don't need to get entangled in the things of civilian life because we're not of this world. Watch this now. Listen. He seeks to please the commanding officer. Huh? One day you and I are going to stand in front of our commanding officer. And he's going to tell us how good our uniform looked. He's going to tell us how well we marched to the beat. He's going to show us how we lived or how we didn't live for him. And we got to be reminded that one day, my commander, I need to be reminded, is not the president, and it's not the Congress, and it's not our state legislators. My commanding officer is the Lord Jesus Christ, and one day I'll give an account to him. We need to understand that. We do. That's okay. Clap right there. I got time for you to clap. That's good. Listen to me. So much today is consumed by civilian life. As far as I see it, listen to me very carefully. Lying and stealing and cheating and sinning has been a part since the garden. And I don't find one verse of Scripture that says it's ever going to go away until Jesus comes a second time and takes care of all of it. You hear me? So... What you know we got to do? We got to show allegiance to our commanding officer. We got to allow God to do a work in our life so that you and I show forth righteousness to other people. What comes out of my mouth and the way I walk, the way I respond, the way I serve, the way I love other people, and what I do for the cause and the kingdom should be different than the world that we live in. I've been saying this a lot, and I'll say it one more time. The church has been guilty way too long of trying to put a righteous coat on unrighteousness. If it's not right on the inside, it doesn't matter how you make it look on the outside. It will never be righteous. God does the work on the inside, and then that permeates itself over time to the outside. Man, here it's good stuff. I wish I was out there. I'd amen it. Here's where we want to end. Listen, our branch to our commanding officer is service. Not one of the services. Not if you want to be involved in it or not. If you're going to bring glory and honor to the Lord the way you live post-salvation, 
your branch is service. You want God to applaud. You want to hear God say, well done. It's service. So know this today, and I'll show you this, and I haven't said this in a while. We've been talking about the cross, talking about Arthur, bless it, and here. You remember the vertical of the cross? You remember, I've just been fascinated, fascinated with the cross for decades now. We got a bunch of this, this place is just full of cross everywhere. The vertical of the cross represents my relationship with the Lord. I want to say this with, with very compassion. Don't play with the vertical part of the cross, folks. You can't have a cross in your life if you don't have a vertical plank. So I asked you today, do, do you know him? There's a vertical plank. He that has the sun has life. There's a vertical plank. But watch this now. The way people know that we have a vertical plank of Christ in our life and a relationship with him is through the horizontal part of the cross. Scripture says, how can you love me whom you haven't seen if you don't love your brother whom you have? By this will all men know that you're my disciples the way you have loved one for another. So what's happened in our world is we, we, we made it a one-piece cross. <laughs> there, there's a lot of people say, preacher, don't worry about me because I got that vertical. But the vertical is seen by the horizontal in our life. And our branch, it's not a branch of service, but our branch is service. It's how we're redeemed. It shows that I've been redeemed because I have that emphasis in my life toward other people. And I just want you to be aware of that. Listen, the coming days, go by and get you one. Mine broke a few weeks ago. I had to get another one because I keep pulling it off. But here's the thing. It reminds me that every day of our life, God left us here to influence and impact somebody else for the cause in the kingdom. It might be a smile. It might be resources. It might be a kind word. It might be getting under the yoke with them and helping them and, and, and bearing their burden with them. It might be praying for them. And there could be a hundred more. But God's called us and he reminds us today that our branch as believers in Christ, giving account to our commanding officer, is service. Hope you receive this today. Would you bow your head right where you are? Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in your house today. Lord, I often say, you know this, I'll say, well, it came together. And God, this sermon really came together for me. Uh, I, I see service clearly already, but this even took it to a new level with me. That if I'm going to be in the army of the Lord, the look, the sound, the direction, the goal, the vision, the, the excitement, the energy, all of it is about service. It is. We don't need to find something new. We just need to do this. So God, I pray for everyone who's heard this on whatever platform, whether in person or, 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 or through our digital platform. Thank you for listening to this broadcast from Lakeshore Church in Byram, Mississippi with Pastor Jay Frazier. We invite you to visit lakeshorecmc.org to find out more online. That's lakeshorecmc.org. Thank you for joining us.